we're going to disassemble this program so we can use it to talk about the calling convention system v amd 64 bits abi or application binary interface and while we're running this program or process we'll go ahead and examine what happens to the stack as the process is running and since we have the program ready we're going to go ahead and compile and then disassemble the program using these two instructions and the second one is a disassembly to intel All right, so main basically starts here, and it starts with this very kind of odd-looking function that basically just evaluates to nope. It's end of branch 64 bits. It means nothing. So we'll just go ahead and, and skip over that one. So here we have the function epilogue, which basically just evaluates over to the curly braces here, and its counterpart is down here, which is the prologue down here, and evaluates to match down here. We'll then begin running the program by pushing the 8-bit frame pointer. The significance of this is basically saving the old base pointer to whatever called main. And next, we'll then create a brand new frame pointer for the stack that represents main's current stack frame by moving the top of the stack over to the base pointer here. So at this point, the stack frame for main is set up. And next, we're getting ready to call a function called do, which is over here. So to do that, we'll need to make note of the system V AMD 64 bits ABI calling convention, which is universal to all Linux box 64 bit operating machines. With this calling convention, all arguments or parameters are always moved into the first set of registers of the following. So whenever you need to pass any integer based parameters or arguments, you use these set of registers for your first six arguments. If instead you were working with floating point values, you would then instead use XMMO all the way to seven. And after the first six arguments, you would then start pushing items onto the stack in reverse order. So we just happen to have three arguments for this function. And so, and the tradition is to always push them from the last argument to the first. So if this happened to be all the way to eight arguments, we would push the eight argument first, and then the seventh, and then the sixth. In the same tradition, we're going to move three into the register for the third argument, and then two to the second register for the second argument, and so forth. As of course, none of this is manipulating the stack frame at all, and so therefore the stack remains the same. At this point, we're going to call do. When a call is about to happen, the next instruction via the instruction pointer is pushed onto the stack and then we then jump over to the address of the function represented by do and so at this point we'll go ahead and jump to 1149 which is going to be up here here we encounter the same instruction the end of the 64-bit branch which just evaluates over to a nope instruction we'll just go ahead and ignore that here we want to go ahead and preserve the old stack frame represented by main and then we'll create a new stack frame that is going to belong to DO. This basically just sets that up. And again, this is the epilogue and this is the prologue of the function that represents these two areas in the code. And here we are making room on the stack because we know the stack is constantly growing downwards in memory from high memory to low memory. So we're gonna reserve plenty of space to take care of this situation happening here, which is gonna be a bunch of local variables that the compiler is taking in upon itself to move the content of the arguments passed to it over to local variables. So we're making plenty of space to account for those. So, the, so we're moving the first parameter onto this location, the second onto here, and then last onto this one. In accordance with this instruction, We'll go ahead and move the first parameter into AX and then move that over to the local variable A. And then here we're moving a hexadecimal 50 into the local variable B. I purposely set up this call to printf because I wanted to illustrate what happens if we did not have it in place here. So in essence, you notice that you have RSP of negative four if I was to not have this at all here, 
if there was no external call to any other function, whether it's a function defined within this program or whether it's a system call, the compiler would not have generated this instruction here. And the reason why I think that's happening is because since no function call would have been happening, there's no need for it to reserve space because it knows how it's dealing with the current stack frame as it is right now. So whereas when you have a function call within a function, the compiler knows that that other function might possibly change up the current status of the local stack frame in some way. So it wants to reserve the current status of it by making sure it explicitly allocates space for each and every single local variable. To just demonstrate this real quick, you will notice that here I have this present and it generated this code and notice the line RSP minus 20. If I comment this out, once it's compiled out, that line of subtract from RSB to be able to reserve space is now gone. And that's of course because there's no call to any other function within this function DO. I'm just gonna go ahead and restore that. This code here disassembles over to here, where in essence we are moving four, which is the size of an integer on my particular machine. We're moving four into the register that holds the second argument to printf. And rightfully so, this is a second argument. And next we're moving the address of this string here into RDI which again represents the register that holds the value for the first argument for printf. The compiler then moves zero into ax for whatever reason, and then finally calls printf. We're not gonna follow printf, we'll just go ahead and skip to the next instruction. Here we're moving local variable a's value into edx, and then we're moving local variable b into ax. RAX, EAX, AX by convention is used to hold the return value of a function. And so here we are basically adding the two together and then storing the result of that addition as represented here into EAX, which sets up our return value for the function DO nicely and then simply returns. And since we're about to leave the function, we'll go ahead and pop the return address into the RIP or instruction pointer and then clean up the stack and then return. So at this point, we'll return back to this instruction here, which then moves hexadecimal 15 into EAX, which again is going to be the return value for main at this point. And then we clean up the stack frame and return control back to the operating system. I hope this video is helpful to explain the calling convention system V AMD 64 bits ABI, while also giving a runtime demonstration of how the stack is working. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and smash the like button. And as always, my name is Solus Code. Check out my other videos.